Welcome back to another episode of Molecular Playground. Today we'll be making glue from just styrofoam and acetone. Most glues today either use polyvinyl acetate or cyanoacrylate as their adhesive base. The former is your classic white school glue that smells great and makes those easily peelable glue scabs little kids like to do. The latter is your pungent smelling instant glue that immediately dries your skin. Of course, glue could also be made from animals by hydrolyzing their collagen in strongly basic conditions, but we're not going to be doing any of that crazy stuff today. We're going to keep it simple, pour and play style. Let's begin. We're going to start off with 100 milliliters of acetone. At first it looks rather innocuous, but this is actually a big enemy of styrofoam. I mean this thing will eat styrofoam for breakfast, lunch and dinner five days a week. After adding just three cups, you'll see that your styrofoam may have a little clump on the bottom. It's almost malleable like, uh, like Play-Doh, but it won't stick. If you add a little bit more, we're going to see our clump start to get bigger. To help it out a little bit, we're going to add a little bit more acetone. We're going to add another 100. And then we're going to keep feeding it more cups. As we further concentrate it, the acetone gets less and less able to dissolve it. That is why our sludge is getting bigger. But the real question is, where is our glue? Is, does the acetone carry sufficient amount of styrofoam where it can be a glue? Or is this paste our glue? Maybe we have two glues in one. Like a rubber cement or in a, in a regular casual glue. Well, that is what we'll aim to find out after a series of tests. Our first test to see is, can this glue work with paper? Now, this should be a prerequisite for all types of glues. If it can't make paper stick together, it's not even glue. So, we're going to attach one side with just the liquid, and then we're going to stick the other side with the clay paste. As you can see, it's already a little gooey, like a cheese line from pizza. We're going to stick that on here, and we're going to press it. Our next test is, can our glue stick cardboard together? Like always, we're first going to start with the liquid side. Press it as so. And then we're also going to start with our paste side. A good dollop here. Look how sticky that is. This might actually be our glue. See how long we could pull it actually. Well, that's about as high I'm, I'm willing to go. See if we could settle this back down. Stick it here.
cut this cheese off. What else? We definitely made, we definitely know for sure we've made one type of glue. It could be rubber cement almost. Our next test will really distinguish our glue from others because most can't glue plastic together. So, as always, we're gonna start with our acetone and then we're gonna start with our paste. Press this down a little bit. And then we're gonna start with, we're gonna do our paste. See more cheese action. This stuff's already pretty messy, so work with this at your own risk, because you will leave quite a mess. Now, we're gonna stick this together, sever this, and we're gonna lay it off to the side for a bit and see if it sticks. For our final test, we're gonna see if this glue can stick tin foil together. So, let's start with our liquid here. Right, and we close it like a sandwich. Okay. And then we're gonna use our paste. Try to cinch this off. Okay. And almost like spreading a big piece of butter or some jelly. It's like spreading those restaurant butters too hard and will ruin your bread if you spread them wrong. I'm gonna press this together. And we're gonna check back pretty soon if this works. For our final take, suppose you got your sausage fingers stuck in this glue. Would it be completely detrimental like if you stuck your hands together with crazy glue? Well, let's see. For our first sausage side, we're gonna be covering with acetone. All right? And then for our second sausage side, we're gonna see what happens if we stick this gloop on it. Once again, peeling off. Wow. It's already sticking to my rubber gloves. Okay. And okay, well. And let's say you're playing with it, touching it and it gets stuck to your hands. Would this be detrimental? We don't know, let's see. Let's get all wrapped and entwined in here. We're now back on site. Let's see how our first test did. So the acetone part, the liquid part, obviously is not the glue, however, the styrofoam part, that jelly marshmallow looking part, is our glue. As you can see, we've gotten a very good stick. And we know it works because it rips the paper. It's a very strong, firm glue. It will take considerable effort to rip off. Our first test our glue works on paper. For our next test, we glued plastic together. Let's see how that turned out. As I said before, the acetone didn't really do anything, so we know that's not our glue. However, the paste actually turned out quite strange. It's not white, but it's like this clear sort of bubbly look. Does it still stick though? With considerable effort, it does stick. Not as good as I would hoped, but it works. It sticks together. It'd be like sticking gum. It would be like sandwiching gum between two plastic bags, but it works. Now let's see how our cardboard performed. Once again, the liquid acetone alone will not glue it, does not work. But if we look at our styrofoam part glue, you can see it actually sticks probably the best. 
that will not come off. So styrofoam works really well in cardboard. We know that now. For our aluminum test, once again, our liquid acetone alone is not enough for a glue. However, if we use styrofoam, let's see how this turned out. Like the plastic wrap, it turned into a more of a crystalline, bubbly look rather than a full solid white. It is still very easily removable though, so our glue does not work on aluminum. Lastly, our sausage fingers. Once again, the acetone does not stick, so you need no worry about that if you ever get your fingers stuck in this glue. However, the other side, the uh, styrofoam paste, is quite firm in there. As you can see, it's quite squishy. Um, maybe you could see my uh, nail indentations. Could, but could I free it? Easily. You can just slip it out. Careful though. But uh, yeah, you could actually make uh, nice molds with these.